Hey everyone, are you used to seeing these great spikes for a week or two in your traffic and then they just come down and level out? You know, this whole thing like this and then it just drops. It's one of the most frustrating things that so many of us in content marketing do for our businesses. We are depending on that quick spike of traffic and then we know the drop off's coming and what do we have to do? We have to do the work of creating more content. How frustrating is that? Well, I get it because going back to 2014 when I started Unveil the Web, that's the kind of strategies we were, you know, deserving of when it came to traffic. You're always pursuing this spike in traffic, drop in traffic, create new content, do it over again. And so many businesses are struggling with this because wouldn't it be great if you could get a spike in traffic and yes, you might get a slow drop off, but then you get this trajectory going back up for three months, six months, a year, or even longer. Well, why is this happening? Well, the reason why it's happening is a couple fold. Number one, we're creating content that's built around a community and communities are fantastic for driving initial traffic to us based on new articles. You go, you create content, you go out, you promote that content through blog commenting and social shares and this whole idea of reciprocity happens. And reciprocity is a beautiful thing, don't get me wrong. But here's the challenge with reciprocity. If you stop contributing to these communities, what happens to people continuing to share your content, engage with you through blog, commenting, etc. It dies, it drops off, it goes away. And you can see that on Veil the Web. You go back to 2014 and 2015 and look at the blog comments, you'll see in some cases 150 plus comments. But then looking at the last six, eight months, you see this precipitous drop off. Why is that? It's because I stopped engaging in the blog communities and those people only valued me to the degree that I left comments on their blogs and then they would come back and leave one on mine. Is it a bad strategy? No, not at all. I met some amazing friends through that strategy, some wonderful people. Here's the challenge though. We don't want to depend on just leaving it to them to drive our traffic. This is where search engine optimization combined with great content happens. So what is the strategy? The strategy is we have to remove ourselves from content plus community to content plus community plus SEO. Because if you do this right, what should happen is, is your content should be seen as your, you know, the EAT principle that we talked about in the recent infographic on the Google hack at the blog of Unveil the Web. So EAT is the principle that Google came out with and what EAT basically stands for is E is expertise, a is authoritativeness and T is trustworthiness. So are you creating in-depth, relevant, on-page content within your expertise or are you just creating any and every kind of comment hoping something sticks and people come to you? That means you've got to do a lot of research. You've got to be including other influencers in your content. You know, think about if you went to college or graduate school like I did, you had to do research to substantiate your positions. It's the same type of thing. You got to go do research and then you document your research and that happens through links and quotes and other things that back up your presuppositions in your content. Now you've done great research, is it authoritative? Meaning, are those people or others out there who are influencers, they serve the same audience you do but in a different way, are they linking back to you? Saying, hey, this is great authoritative content and because they're seen as authoritative, it pulls you up in the search rankings based on the keywords and the content that you've created that you're using. And you've got to remember, it's not all keyword driven anymore. It's holistic content driven. So I'm not saying avoid keywords. Don't do that. That would be foolishness. But at the same time, realize that, you know, a 500 or a thousand word article probably isn't going to cut it anymore. The content has to be so much richer and deeper and the depth has to be so fantastic that people want to link to it. Now, that's the authoritative part. That's the off-page SEO part that drives the on-page together. And then there's the trustworthiness. And what trustworthiness simply means is are you ethical? Are you staying within ethical boundaries? Are you telling people what you're doing with their information? Are you being uh, genuine? Or are you getting caught doing manipulative things? And that's the kind of stuff you want to avoid. So the EAT principle, right? Sit back and think about this for just a minute. If you do all of this right, if you get that bump in the beginning from your community and then you start seeing the SEO coming up, then it just propels it even more because those people coming onto your site are, are as apt to share that content on social media as the people that are in your community. And here's the beautiful part of it. 
you now are attracting people to your content who are able, willing, and ready to share it via social and links in their articles that are authoritative. And by doing that, you're creating a whole new community that's evolving and growing on an ongoing basis. But the thing is, it doesn't depend on you having to create content every single day or week. It allows you to create that massive amount of content on one article that solves one problem, meets one need, or fulfills one desire for one person per piece of content. It's authoritative and relevant, and as a result, you can spend more time promoting it, engaging with it, putting it out there, and, and you can build that new community that's always evolving and growing so that now you're getting that multiplication effort. Where unfortunately, even what I experience and what most of you experience is, we kind of get stuck in a rut with our communities and we don't leave it. And it's really hard to leave it because you get this internal fear that if I do, it's all going to fall apart and I'm not going to have any comments and my blog's going to look weak again. So you have to just think about what is the purpose of your website. In the early days, it was social validation, right? And my community gave that to me. But as I began to move on from that, I had to actually create an ongoing new community in all different types of medias, from LinkedIn to Twitter, even Facebook, uh, places like Medium or Inbound.org. And in my case, that's where people like me hang out and we grow and we build relationships with one another. Other, you know, these entrepreneurs and business owners that are playing in different spaces. So your community should always be growing and evolving, but that community should be a two-way street of providing value to them, but they're also providing value for you, and that value comes back and it reflects itself in your authority, and it reflects itself in the backlinks you get from Google and the SEO that is created for your pieces of content that drive more to you to create a whole new community on an ongoing basis. So if you're just leaving it inside that little community that you created, you're setting yourself up for failure. Is it time to evolve beyond that for you? If it is, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. I'd love to engage with you and get some feelings or thoughts around how do you need to evolve your content so that you can achieve the goals that you have for your business.